Beating down the heat behind the woodshed, Jason Tatum's 31-piece, 8-mile Peyton Pritchard's crucial 14 off the pine, Al Horford's 4-block shots on the back end, along with the trade deadline acquisition Derek White's increased aggressiveness and his typically underrated defense, was all more than enough to annihilate the fully healthy number one seed. Competing with a sense of urgency from minute 1 through 48 that wasn't present whatsoever in their previous outing in Game 3, Robert the Time Lord Williams re-entering the lineup gave the Seas a significantly more stable pick-and-roll defense and also a lob threat they so desperately missed. Shockingly, on the other side for Miami, five Heat starters combined for just 18 points. Why should the NBA beware of this ragingly stacked Boston roster? Before continuing, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single video, as only 11.5% of you watching right now are subscribed. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. If the Celtics play with a sense of urgency from the jump, collectively bring their A game, and also have their most valuable defensive players healthy, these 2022 playoffs are pretty much said and done. You can give fans in Beantown their city's 18th NBA title, but not so fast, because the only problems are that Coach Ime Udoka's team's focus just after the opening tip varies on a game-to-game -game basis, and they've also had some bad luck with injuries. Al Horford missed game one against Miami on health and safety. Marcus Smart's now missed two games in this series after badly landing and re-injuring his right ankle, while Robert Williams III was limited to three games against Milwaukee, and he missed game three in this series against Miami. In that game missed by the Time Lord, Bam Adebayo went off for 31 points, and the defense that Boston's known for got broken down time after the other. Conversely, with the Time Lord returning on Monday night, Adebayo was limited to just 9 points, and it was how Robert tired out Bam in the rebounding battle that made it a much more grueling night at the office for the Heat center. RW3 pulled down a physically draining 5 offensive boards, and he out-hustled Bam on the glass. Robert gave Coach Udoka a nice offensive boost in a precautionary 19 minutes, as the springy 24-year-old center scored 12 points in that limited time. Compiling two blocks on the night, the first victim's Gabe Vincent, who thinks he's got a Game 3-esque wide-open layup in transition, but watch how Robert doesn't rotate over too quickly, as Williams is aware his long strides and ridiculous 7'5 wingspan can cover a ton of ground in just a split second. Not rotating over too quickly, that makes Gabe Vincent assume the paint is wide open, but just as he releases the shot, Time Lord pops right up to completely bother the layup attempt and force a miss. But it was possessions like this next one in the half court that really made Heat players scared to attack the paint. After PJ Tucker sets this pin down for Oladipo, Victor hesitates a drive to the rim because of Williams being right there, instead getting an on-ball screen from Tucker to his left hand. After finding PJ on the short roll, again the Time Lord baits an attempt from a Heat player it doesn't seem like he's in position to get the block right here. He seems way too far back in the paint. But RW3 then bursts into position out of nowhere, this time embarrassing a Miami attacker with a vicious fast break infusing block shot. The DPOI and Marcus Smart rightfully gets all the attention as being the Celtics' most valuable defensive stopper, but when they're missing the Time Lord's incredibly intelligent second layer of defense with his back-end rotations and forceful rim protecting, Boston's defense visibly becomes much weaker. Having Robert healthy in this series against a versatile and at times dominant force like Adebayo means absolutely everything for the Seas. A separate video entirely can be made on the adjustments by the Celtics' other elite defensive center, Big Al, who bounced back to keep Adebayo in check after Bam went off in the previous outing. Horford was a game's second best plus 33 only behind Tatum, likely having the best 5-point playoff game since Dennis Rodman. It was the Godfather's 13 Game 4 rebounds and overpowering 4 blocks which made all the difference after tying the Eastern Conference Finals at 2 games apiece. They may own the NBA's best defensive rating among teams remaining in the postseason, but along with their injuries, we never know which team's going to show up, and there's no advanced stat that can predict which energy level that Tatum and the Celtics are going to come out with. But the reason why the NBA should beware of this Celtics team 
not only this year, but into the future, is because Tatum and Brown could be winning titles this entire decade. While I'm not guaranteeing anything, the NBA's best duo at the moment are young, athletic, and ferociously hungry to capture their first championship rings. Most importantly, Jason and Jalen are both sensational wing defenders. When he's locked in on this end of the court, Jason Tatum's 7-foot wingspan allows him to resemble an NFL cornerback with how he can easily anticipate and then intercept passes. He's also incredibly bothersome as a one-on-one -on -one defender, as Jason rarely gets beat off the dribble, and again, that 7-foot reach allows him to seamlessly contest and impact his matchup's jumper. While Tatum's known for his bucket getting, his defensive chops fly completely under the radar, and at times, I've seen people disrespect his defense. When Kevin Durant, Jimmy Butler, and Drew Holiday have been defended by Tatum in these playoffs, which has been for 291 possessions and 60 minutes of matchup time, they've scored 44 points on just 15 for 53 shooting from the floor. Jason's also forced 16 turnovers on those plays and swatted five shots. Speaking of underrated, Peyton Pritchard looks like the most overlooked point guard across the entire NBA right now. Not having Marcus Smart means the guard play from both Pritchard along with Derek White is going to be crucial for Ime Udoka. I thought it was an excellent adjustment for Boston to have Derek be more aggressive to start game four as the new dad was barely shooting in the outings prior to that. But it's been double P, or as Tatum once nicknamed him after an Eminem album, 8 Mile, who stood out the most to me out of any other Boston role player over the last little while. Outplaying the sixth man of the year in Tyler Hero during this series, I've been shocked by the speed off the dribble and fundamentally sound slash poised shooting stroke from Pritchard ever since my Raptors were taken to overtime when Boston was missing about everyone on their roster in a game I was chanting defense at, I can say from watching him in person that Peyton's a calm, cool, and collected killer, and you can expect his production to potentially get even better as these games progress. But considering it's too tough for me to decide between Pritchard, White, Williams, and Horford, or even Grant Williams, you're going to have to let me know in the comments who's Boston's most valuable role player, Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to Swoo, who says Wig's best quality has to be his athleticism. Appreciate every take. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.